And to my explainer tonight. Now, the reorganization of the Deputy President's security has ignited debate in the country over the roles of the different police units. Now, while that political debate rages on, let's get to understand how they function. Well, before we get into the AP versus the GSU debate, let's first take a look at the overall structure of the police. And it is outlined both in the Constitution of Kenya in Article 243 and the National Police Service Act. Now, if you take a look at that structure, the National Police Service is divided into two sections. The Kenya Police Service, this service comprises units like the regular police that we interact with more often, the CID that collects and provides criminal intelligence and investigates serious crimes like homicides, terrorism, human trafficking and money laundering. And then we've got the GSU that is divided into units called companies like the Reki Company and the G Company. We'll come back to this in a little while. Now, the Administration Police Service, on the other hand, has the anti-theft, st anti-stock theft unit, the Border Patrol unit, and the Rapid Deployment unit. Now, while these two formations have distinct roles, they all perform the same basic core function. The National P Police Service Act outlines these commonalities, such as preserving the peace, maintaining law and order, and protection of life and property. Now, over and above these basic functions for the entire police service, the GSU and the AP wing differ somewhat from the regular police in both roles and functions, and as a result, in the training that they receive, similar to how medical students receive basic training in aspects such as anatomy, and then branch off into specialized training like gynecology, oncology, or even neurosurgery. Basic training is given to all in the service, and this includes things like firearm handling, um, field handling, and, of course, understanding of the law. In addition to this, the GSU and the AP both receive paramilitary training. Now, that involves things like sniper training, close combat skills, collection of intel, VIP protection skills, moving informations, sectional attacks, hostage rescue, and security defensive driving. Now let's go into now each of these roles. Let's begin with the roles of the administration police unit that include border patrol and border security, um, specialized stock theft prevention services and protection of the cash in transit services. I'm sure you've seen this on the streets, including as well protection of government property and vital installations and strategic points. So you would typically see the AP guarding government buildings, chiefs camps. They also have their own special forces who are involved in the rapid deployment unit. So the training of the AP would then be more specific to their functions of anti-stock theft, border patrol, Patrol and the RDU, that's the Rapid Deployment Unit. Now, let's talk about the General Service Unit that is typically involved in containing internal security situations, things like quelling riots, uprisings, and other civil disturbances. The National Police Service Act has very specific roles for the commandant of the GSU, which include, but are not limited to, anti-poaching operations, escort duties, and also here is the clincher, security to the president, the deputy president, state houses, and lodges. For this, the GSU is divided into companies that handle specific roles. So you've got the Reki company, which is a quick response force that is dealing in things like hostage rescue and including the Sky Marshals team. And then you've got the G company that is responsible for fixed site security and VIP protection for individuals who are holding the office of the presidency. The specialist skills required for GSUs include sniper training, hostage rescue, collection of intel, close combat skills, and sectional attacks. Now, of course, um, let me say here that, you know, since this story broke, there have been misconceptions about which unit is more superior than the other, and this may be due to our interactions with them. You know, some have experienced the GSU during riots and may believe that they're tougher due to the terms like Guza Serikali Wone or Fanya Fujo Wone, and this now you can tell my age, and they may deem the AP less tough 
you know, you remember them being referred to as Askariwa chief because they're often seen guarding the chief's camps, which is actually within their mandate as the chief's camp is a government installation. And if you remember, it was quite important during the era of the provincial administration. The chief's camp is still a government installation today that needs protection. But the fact is this. The AP and the GSU have different roles they provide, and so to compare them, according to security analysts, is like judging a fish by its ability to climb a tree. Their roles are different, and so too is their training that is suited to enable them perform those roles as outlined in the law. So now that we are clear on which unit is responsible for what, there is the other issue of the numbers. How many guards should each individual have, right? Now, regarding those numbers, there is no law that specifically states how many officers each public officer should have. And here's a point to note, status is not the only factor that determines the security level that is accorded to an individual. Now, before allocation of security services to any asset, an assessment is made to determine the threat level against them, and it is known as a threat and risk analysis. So they would start to ask questions like, where does this person live? What are the general crime rates in that specific area? What specific threats have been made against the individual, or what threats are they likely to attract due to the nature of their work? So this report is then what determines which unit is deployed, the numbers that are deployed, and the roles they will play. For example, one judge may have more security than another of similar rank due to perhaps a sensitive case they may have recently handled that raised the threat level against them. Another example, an ordinary Kenyan who would be a witness in a sensitive case may be accorded security, or one cabinet secretary may have more than another depending on the assessment that is made by the authorities. So that is an explainer of our security forces and specifically to do with VIP protection. So now, with all the rhetoric that's going on, now you know.